Jay Stephanie with Levinson and Stephanie here in Chicago. Today, we're going to take a look at a different way we use Filevine, not necessarily for handling or managing our cases, but today it's how we handle or manage our team members. So what I did was I created a project type so that we can have a different project for each of our team members. And what I did to sort of keep that separate from everything else, uh, as you probably know, you can have different orgs within your Filevine account. So for example, our primary one here is Levinson and Stephanie. That's where all of our cases are. Uh, some of our other firm, general firm stuff, you know, resources, CLE trackers that I've mentioned, marketing projects, other stuff like that. But I want to create one that sort of closed it off a little to make sure that we could sort of protect access to all of this. So what I did was I created a separate org on our account, and it's just LS management. I made sure the only members of our team that are members of the LS management org in Filevine is just me and my partner, Ken. Obviously, depending on how your firm is set up, you can control whoever would have access to that. If you're a bigger firm, you probably have an HR director, maybe a COO, something along those lines. But that's just one way to sort of keep this separate. So getting into how we actually uh, use this and how I built this out. So obviously, we have a different project for each employee here at the firm. There's obviously the contact card, easy, for the employee. Uh, you know, name, date of birth. I keep their uh, personal contact information here separate for the firm. It's a way to you know make sure we always have that um, and then obviously, you know, once you get over into the details, you can add other aspects, you know, any other notes, social security number, obviously you're going to have that for payroll, for taxes, everything, but that's basically the contact card. The activity feed is a really nice feature here. Uh, as we all know from using Filevine for any reason, being able to add notes, tasks, we don't really use it for tasks that much here, but being able to add a note. Or because every project has its own dedicated email address, that's a really nice feature to make sure that anytime you're sending an email, either uh, amongst your management team or uh, specifically an email to the team member that is related to you know, their job, maybe a bonus or a review or maybe something not as exciting, um, you can always make sure that it is going to be within the project's activity feed. So you can always go back and look at it. One thing I will say is the email address. If you are going to name your project the employee's name, and if you like we do, their firm email address starts with their first name, you're going to want to do something to make sure that this is very clear, this one, so you're not inadvertently emailing your team member when you're meaning for it to go directly into their uh, project here. The only other things we keep in here, uh, again, you can obviously customize this. I kept it nice and simple in the vitals, basically job title, hire date, and what their current pay is. Employee information, again, this is just the sort of really basic at a glance. Job title, the actual hiring date, start date, role, and you know, depending on your firm structure setup, probably size, you might have way more options. I just like to put something in there for us. This is whatever their current pay is. You know, Obviously, if they're eligible for other benefits, uh, yes or no. And then at some point towards the end, uh, the at the end, uh, we put in their actual last date at the firm. And once that happens, the only two phases I have for this one are active and archived. Um, you could probably also do an additional one, you know, maybe do a probationary, uh, you know, if you have that set up where someone needs to be working at the firm for a certain period of time before they're formally officially brought on, you know, or you could even do a, an interviewing phase and really build this out. We haven't really done that. We really haven't found the need yet, but again, it might be a, a different option you could do. Salary history, whether they have a raise, you know, that bumps them up or a bonus. So within here, again, whatever the effective date is for a bonus would be the date that they receive the bonus, whatever the amount is, and then the type, right? Is this a salary or pay, in which case, you know, a raise, for example, or is it a bonus? 
And then I also put down notes down here just as a better descriptor. You know, you could put down if it's an annual bonus, uh, if it's a, an attorney, you know, maybe it's a, a bonus based on a case that they, they brought in. And then again, if there are any documents, you could add them right here. Bonus metrics. This is a good one we've been using. So one of the types of bonuses our team is, is they're eligible for uh, sort of an ideal team player bonus. Uh, and that's something we build off of these various factors or metrics, if you will. Have we reviewed it with the employee? Yes. When was the last time we updated any of the categories? And again, if this is something that we you know, converted into a Word document or a PDF that we then sent to the employee, we would keep that document here just to sort of keep track of that. And again, you can build this out however you want. Uh, whatever your metrics are, or whatever the categories are, it's just it's a nice place to keep all of them. Related to that, these improvement plans. So this would be a situation, for example, if you're bringing on a, a new team member, or maybe they've been struggling with a particular set of responsibilities. You can sit down with them, walk through. Hey, here's what I want you to improve on. Here's what I want, need you to work on. Here are some of the resources that are going to help you reach this goal, and then. Basically, here's when we met, here's when we're putting this into place, and here's the date we're going to hopefully achieve these goals by. Somewhat related to that, reviews. So what's the purpose of the review? Usually for us, these are typically just the sort of end of the year reviews. Um, you know, We put down a type, the date we did the review, who sat down with the person, what we discussed, and then if there were documents related to it. Now, I'm going to skip this one for now. Yeah the end, uh, all good things come to an end. Uh, this is just sort of the exit interview. Again, whichever one, probably be both me and my partner can, or, but we would add down there the date of the exit interview notes. You know, typically for us, it's, you know, let's walk through why this didn't work out. You know, is there something we could have done differently? You know, self-reflection, self-improvement, you know, is this a training issue? You know, should we have done more training earlier on, checked in more often, whatever. You put something here, any documentation you'd have here uh, at that time, sort of at that goodbye. Uh, for example, if they're on health insurance, uh, you know, you've got the COBRA documents you've got to provide for them. This is a great place to put it. Um, you've got it confirmed in there and you would confirm it in the notes here that you did provide it to them. You could also email them copying the project again, and it would all pop up in the activity feed. You just have more documentation. Yes, we did everything we were supposed to. We provided them with all this. You know, for example, any 401k stuff, you know, hey, you have the right to do blah, blah, blah. This is another good place to put it. Getting back up to docs. I'm a big believer. Anytime you have a section that has a document attachment field uh, in the customs editor, make sure you've got it built out so that those documents automatically sort into a particular folder and often add a hashtag to it just for searchable. I added a hiring docs. You know, once we have hired the person, I'll add things in there, you know, maybe their resume and cover letter or writing sample during that interview process. But then I'm also putting things in there once we're onboarding them, you know, confirming, uh, you know, that they've been invited for, you know, to enroll for health insurance. Uh, or their direct deposit form or, you know, some of those other W-4 or whatever, all the tax documents. It's another place to put all of that. And then lastly, that team access. Again, I keep this in here, especially for this type of a project where I want to make sure I am limiting who has access to actually see this project. Um, it's just a place to double check to make sure you haven't inadvertently set up uh, an employee's project that maybe people can see it that shouldn't be seeing it. Uh, so that's what we are doing. I'd love to hear from you if you are doing it and you're doing it differently, uh, ways that maybe we can share ideas and improve. Uh, if you have any questions, um, how to set this up, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to chat and discuss how we can use Filevine to improve our practices. And if, if you find these helpful, please feel free to like or follow or subscribe depending on where you're watching this. 
uh, and look forward to uh, hearing from you and discussing how we can keep using Filevine. Thanks.